first thing, you know, that we, we want to explore is this idea about personal science. Personal science is something that has become popular. I think maybe it's always been popular, but it's been um, in the technology realm within the last sort of 10 years. People have Apple Watches. People have apps for their health. People have um, uh, step trackers. You know, you can track the number of steps you take in a day. You can track what you eat and the calories you consume, et cetera, et cetera. What we want to explore here is something called caregiving personal science. And Zachary, you and I were talking yesterday about a metaphor here of looking at our caring lives through a telescopic camera lens. We want to put a telescope on our everyday lives in order to understand what it is that we're actually doing so that we can uh, widen the lens, step back and say, okay, I am doing all of these things. And some of these things I don't like doing. <laughs> and am I able to give those tasks away? Which ones of those tasks would I never want to give away? This idea of owning your daily life as a caregiver, curating it as an art curator would, would say, pick and choose, refine here, ditch that. I don't need to be doing that. But in order to curate your daily life as a caregiver, you need to first figure out what am I doing? And we have a whole chapter on this in our book that really goes into um, exploring some of these uh, few domains of what people do in, in caring. So transportation, um, you know, you may be, you may start as a caregiver by just driving your mother to medical appointments, but then she loses her license because she has progressing dementia, say. And boy, then trans she refuses to take taxis because she thinks that's a waste of money and you become her full-time driver. So every element of these care tasks is worth tracking in some way. Sometimes it's simply um, a reflection on laundry. If you're looking after someone who is incontinent, man, oh man, you are doing a lot of laundry. And, you know, it might be worth looking at a laundry service, a service that comes to your door, picks up your dirty laundry and delivers it clean and folded. But you may not know that until you look at your life and say, I never realized how much laundry I was doing until I counted the loads of it in a day. So this is, is what, what this exercise is all about. And I hope that as you're looking at this slide, you'll reflect on um, some of the big tasks here that you're doing. And not just whether you're doing them, but whether you enjoy doing them. So, Zachary, when you were caring for your mother, is there one thing here that stands out that, that you did a lot? Oh, Zachary, you're muted. Yes, Donna. Uh, you know, in the beginning, transportation um, during uh, radiation treatment was something that was ongoing. And um, it became, you know, it was a necessary part of that experience. But... Um, and then the food component too. So I felt like in the course of a day, I was sure doing a lot of tasks. And at times um, it became a bit overwhelming because I felt exhausted and didn't quite know why I was exhausted. I've, I, in a, and I think this list is so helpful because it helped, can help to untangle what it exactly is that we're doing at what times and when those spaces for 
connection or slowing down or spending some valuable time with your loved one in ways that is meaningful for you. So I would say that for me, it was kind of food and transportation in the beginning were really significant uh, types of care tasks we were involved in. Mm -hmm. Were you able to look at the transportation that you were doing and thinking, how can I make this more than just driving my mom? How can I make this a time maybe for, well, it would have been involved in medical management if you're driving her to appointments because right. maybe you're a note taker at those appointments. So you'd be ticking those two boxes and maybe drawing a line between the two of them. Um, but also, you know, reflecting on how can I, if I, if I think of these things um, as something I have to do, how can I make them richer? How can I, if I know that I have a limited amount of time with my mother, mm -hmm. because you had a terminal diagnosis, mm -hmm. how can we look at transportation to make that more meaningful personally? That might be mm -hmm. an opportunity to look at, I've got this time with her in the car. And maybe by looking carefully at how much time you're actually spending driving, there might be a possibility to shift the experience within the experience because you have to drive her. Right. So I think the idea here would be that you look really carefully at these elements of, of care tasks and you think, what, what it, what's going on when I'm doing these? Do I enjoy doing them? Do I feel a sense of, of caring and the, the feeling of um, fullness in our heart that we, we have when we know that we're doing something important for someone we love? Or does it feel like drudgery? And is there any room for shifting how we do these tasks to give them more meaning? So that would be the other, um, the sort of secondary challenge that I think we have um, in looking closely at what it is that we're doing in any given day. Um, Zachary, I'm also going to ask you to keep your eye on the chat box because I can't see it. Um, Zachary, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, and just uh, responding to Nicole, the idea that, um, you know, uh, feeling like you can at some level develop this semblance of control over both identifying the tasks that you're engaged in and then doing what exactly you were saying. You have capacity to make meaning out of that experience rather than it being determined for you. And yes, that's exactly what, what I mean. Yeah, you've just expressed it so well. Um, we, we can exert control over what happens within these tasks, and we can influence the way we feel about them. Um, you know, there may be some tasks that you're always going to hate. Some people just hate cooking. <laughs> and certainly some people hate cleaning. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, e even those, um, I, I, uh, one time I made a playlist for myself for cleaning. And so when I clean, I put my earphones in and play all my favorite music and it becomes less of a chore, you know. Um, so I, I, I'd like you to reflect on all of the tasks uh, that, that are in that list and pick three that you want to give away. Pick three tasks that you have to do as a caregiver every day that you wish someone else would do. That, um, that it would be possible for someone else to do. So some things, you know, you really find very difficult, but it would be for, for any number of reasons, um, really not possible to, to give away, but these are the possibles. And, and I'd like you to just to maybe make a note of those three things because we're going to come back to them a little bit later. I'll just give you another couple of minutes, just two minutes to 
to think about what those tasks might be. And I'll just, there's the slide again to think about yard work, pet walking, cleaning, food shopping, and cooking, uh, medical management, which is a myriad of tasks, um, laundry, transportation, uh, those are just a few a few things. There could be other, um, other tasks that you have at home related to other family members. If, you have, if you're looking after a child with disabilities and you're also looking after um, his or her siblings, that's, um, that's a task too. Donna, uh, so uh, Sandy and uh, Aurora have uh, come forward and said that laundry for them, laundry and transportation are some of the tasks that they, if they could, they would like to give away. Perfect, good. Try to pick three things, because I think three is a good round number of things to give away in your life. Uh, Holly is talking about, would love to give away indoor cleaning, laundry and outdoor maintenance, except snow, of course. Um, Suhata, uh, cleaning, cooking, transportation. Amy's talking about cleaning her mom's washroom. I invited them just to share one, uh, but of course your list highlights three, Perfect. just in terms of getting them talking. These are all... Yeah, um, for Nicole uh, talking about for COVID in particular uh, would love some respite so someone could play with her daughter so she can get that one-on-one engagement and give her some more time to spend with her son. Mm-hmm. Jean, yard work, cleaning and transportation. Erica, uh, same as Holly and so too with the snow comments. We have some themes about snow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet we do. <laughs> <laughs> 